What's going on guys, it's Tommy, and we are at the Grand National Roaster Show in Pomona, California. Uh, we do this show every year, and today is setup day, so it's a little bit of a mess, excuse the mess, but we're getting ready for the first day of the show, which is tomorrow, a Friday, and it runs Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Tons of beautifully restored vehicles in this show, and it truly shows you the time and effort people put into their vehicles to make them art pieces. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you around our booth, uh, we have a little lounge section that we're going to set up here for our clients. Uh, we're going to have a, a merch booth set up here with the uh, appropriate apparel. And then Dave Shutton from our speed shop, from Galpin Speed Shop, has a couple of his vehicles on display here. The bubble top. These are two barn fine Corvettes that uh, are huge in the history of like hot rodding and, and stuff. Uh, these are going to be restored shortly in the next year or two uh, through Dave's shop. And then this is something I could tell you guys tons about. So this is a Ford Bronco 2021 that we uh, got and we built for SEMA. Uh, this has the ADV wide body kit. So you can see these, these fenders, front fenders and rear fenders were replaced. Uh, it's wider than stock and it deletes the fender flares that typically come on this truck from the factory. So something I learned, we did the Bronco uh, Rodeo out in Vegas that they actually teach you. So when you're sitting inside the driver's seat, the reason why, two reasons that these are there. These are called, um, they can be used with limb risers. So limb risers would go through here, get connected and go up into the A-pillar frame on top. And if trees or branches are coming in, these limb risers, they will be like a, a wire hung and strung between these two points. It would bounce off any trees or limbs that are gonna come in and not interfere your view. That's one reason, but that's really used for areas that are very jungly, think like, uh, South America, I think um, Africa, I think maybe like uh, uh, areas again that are densely uh, in dense in vegetation and, and dense jungle. Out here in the desert, you don't really get that as much. But what Ford engineers, what the Ford engineers have done, is this indicates where the inside of your tire is. So this indicates where your tire is here. So as you're driving, when you're off-roading, sometimes, not sometimes, when you're going through obstacles, there's something called picking your line. So you have to pick your line of where your tires are gonna be placed on the road so you're the most successful in, in uh, overcoming that obstacle or you know advancing up that obstacle or advancing down that obstacle, whatever it might be. So that's, it's, it's a very cool option. I think it's a, it's a really cool idea that they thought about this, but as the driver sitting there, you can see that your tire is gonna land. So pretty much you can imagine that your tire will be outside of this. So your tire is gonna land here, and here so as you're driving up or down an obstacle you can correctly place your tires in the right location where it's supposed to be and you could safely get up or down that that obstacle because again these trucks are very capable but for instance if you had a model without lockers and you have to uh, negotiate it with more finesse that's another option or that's another feature that's going to allow you to do it uh, more successfully <laughs> so we're going into building number four now which we're going to check out the hero hot Merc. we have on display right in the center And there she is. What a beauty. Dave Shun, he's spending. <laughs> nice. I'm not even drinking. Beautiful part, in my opinion, with this car culture is you see a little bit of everything from different, uh, you know, uh, tastes. Uh, so this uh, is an Impala Lowrider. It's a station wagon, which is more rare. But you see all the chrome work has had carvings on it. 
And then obviously the paint has had quite a few hours of panel work and everything. It looks beautiful. We have the matching surfboards up top. You have the air system back there. You have the subwoofers. This thing is beautifully done. Very, very nicely done. And again, you got House of Color. So. Oh no, it's the, that end one. <clears throat> There's even the valve covers. Oh, beautiful. Look at the front bumper. The valve cover, even the firewall has a mural on it. El Camino and a vet and they're both beautiful just look at the paint on the red one you can just see all the hours of detailed bodywork it's not the paint really that matters it's the bodywork if the bodywork's done well even the paint job if it's not 100% will still look better but look at all this bodywork even the whole bed's been finished wow look at that suspension baby that's from the truck road that I could tie into. So he has reservoirs, uh, external reservoirs on that. So again, same thing. You don't, see, lighter colors, it's kind of harder to see the bodywork, but on reds and blacks and darker colors, you can definitely see all the time and effort. Look at the front suspension, the reservoirs right there. You got carbureted motor. Let's see what's making all this noise. I think it looks like a Nova. That's a Nova, all right. So here's another lowrider example. Same thing with all the paneling work. Painstakingly, it takes hours and hours of work, but it comes out beautifully. Um, this is another Impala as well, but this is a two-door Impala. Look at this patina Bel Air. So it's a coupe station wagon. So these are, from what I know, these are uh, rare. They're called Nomads from what I know. Oh uh, yeah, I think, yeah, this is a Nomad. So these, again, from what I know, they're more rare than the other ones, than the four doors that you would see. Or than the two door coupes that you would see. Oh wow, look at that. It looks like an LT4. Looks like an LT4 engine in there. Or my bad, it's an LT5. So the reason why that, uh, that top of the supercharger looks familiar is we put an LT4 and a 67 Chevelle years ago, like five, six years ago. So that looks, that's the next generation, it's the LT5. But yeah, this thing is, it might not look like it, but this thing's gonna boogie. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely set up correctly. Look at that radiator, geez. That's a massive radiator. Yeah, this thing's set up quite nicely. So there are a series of cars that are here at this show. They're gonna be uh, competing for an award this year. So every year at the Grand National Roadster Show, there's an Amber Award, which is the America's Most Beautiful Roadster. Uh, so each of the vehicles that are gonna be in these little spots, so I think there's nine or 12, are gonna be competing for the Amber. These are all vehicles that have gone over and beyond and just have just that much more customization and, and and just uh, custom work done to it. So you can see this example here. The, uh, the motor is a 1953 Canadian Plymouth block. It was actually a warranty replacement by Plymouth back then. Okay. Um, the numbers on the motor actually show that. The head is one of 15 ever made. It's an Edgy head. Um, the intake manifold itself is made by Tattersfield, and it's one of one. I just talked to these, the guy's son who made it. He's actually down at the other end over there, and uh, he told me that was one of one manifold over there. Nice. I bought that from him. What looks like carburation on there is actually fuel injection. Those are individually cast, they're actually individually machined as well, and they're individually programmed to a custom program for that cam, for that compression, for that intake manifold, all that stuff all together. So and and so did you, did you design it yourself or did you build it yourself? 
I'm my company is open. Hey, what's the company? Jelly Bean Auto. Jelly Bean Auto. Well, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Thomas from Jelly Bean Auto Sports. So just doing a quick walk around. Pleasure. Look at the interior, just the way it's done, just the colors, how well they flow together. And you can see you have like books here of, of the process, you know, how it's taken to, you know, from before paint, metal work, primed, uh, the chassis has been painted, engine's been in. So you can kind of see this is the whole progression of this vehicle through there. And it really helps telling the story of, you know, what went on, how these vehicles come to be where they are. And look at this thing, look at, the, again, the paint work. Just looking at that panel, when it looks like a mirror, you have to guarantee that's not just paint, that's bodywork. That's the bodywork being done so precisely that this thing now looks like a mural. And then this is the, the award that they win. So your name pretty much, as you win, your name goes on a plaque there. And, uh, and you get bragging rights. So there's gonna be judges that are pre-selected and the judges will go around and look at these vehicles and rate them from all different kinds of categories that they have already preset and they rate them and, and you know, judge them from there. Like look at this, this color is beautiful. It's a dark blue and then like the wheels are gray. Love the color on this one. Interior is like a, like a dark blue gray. Blue Brothers hot rods and beautifully done. All the louvers and stuff, love the work. It's another beautiful blue color. Actually, this is a Ford. I didn't even I didn't even catch the uh, catch it that this was a Ford. So this is done in a traditional Ford blue as well. I love the contrast of the polished metal with the blue <clears throat> and the polished metal ties in with the chrome wheels, white walls, very, very nicely done. Very nicely done. This is another Ford hot rod. Not traditional at all. It's not something that looks uh, familiar to my eyes, but it's definitely a Ford hot rod. Edsel. It's a 34 Edsel. Beautifully done. We actually have an Edsel in our collection as well, but uh, not quite the same era as that. And you got your last two contestants. So all of these cars that are in these little square uh, display areas are all competing for the Amber Award this year. Ford Deluxe. I could spot the supercharger poking out from underneath from across the room. That is a beast of a supercharger. This is either like a Nova or... This is a Torino? But holy schmoly, that is a huge, 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 huge supercharger. Jesus. I can't tell, let me see the rear. Excuse me, is this a Nova? Nova or Chevelle? Roadrunner. So that was a Roadrunner. So yeah, I'm sorry, I was completely off on that. Six cool, that carbon fiber lip that they made at the bottom. HREs, very tastefully done. And that thing is badass too. Okay, 
Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much, this is the main hall. So building four at the Grand National Roadster Show is where like all the uh, action happens, if you will. So that's where the cars for the Amber Award are staged. And uh, uh, if you will, like the heavy heaters are. And then you have other halls that have specific, uh, so you have like a low rider hall, you have, um, again, other halls that are dedicated to specific stuff. 